Uh, we're going to start some transitions into uh, our C Summit speeches. We got three dynamic students for you here, uh, here today from several districts. You can see the graphic on the uh, page that you see there. Everything you're going to hear in the summit is created 100% by our students, period, end of story. So let's get excited. Let's give a virtual round of applause uh, for our first student coming up. And to bring them and introduce them, we're going to invite my good friend from Kettle Moraine, Pat, to the table to introduce our first C Summit student leader. Pat, I'm tossing it over to you, my good friend. Thank you so much. And I am so excited to be a small part in this very, very unique opportunity. Nor Salome is our student and she is passionate about social justice and reform in Pakistan and America. A second generation Palestinian on her dad's side and American on her mom's side. Nor is an outstanding cellist considering a career in music education and performance. In addition to being a full-time student in our school for arts and performance, she interns with the Milwaukee Youth Symphony Orchestra with their inner city students program. Nor credits much of her knowledge to her two older sisters who have mentored her along the way. Coming to Kettle Moraine as a freshman, we are delighted with our opportunity to learn and grow with Noor, and we encourage you to join us. Hello all, my name is Noor Salome and I am a Palestinian American and I am a sophomore at the Kettle Moraine High School for Arts and Performance. It's wonderful to be with you all. Being Palestinian, I learned from a young age about my family's story. My grandparents were born and raised in Lifta, Palestine and were forced out due to a large military, Israeli military invasion that led to the creation of the State of Israel in 1948. Palestinians call this day Al Nakba, which translates to the catastrophe. My grandparents, as well as 7 million Palestinian refugees, have not been able to return to this day due to Israeli apartheid, which is a term defined as a quote from Cornell Law School, maintenance of a system of legalized racial segregation in which one racial group is deprived of political and civil rights, end quote. So I learned of their struggle as refugees when I was about seven years old. And ever since then, I felt a need to try and raise awareness for the Palestinian struggle. And with age, I've begun to notice injustice all around me living in America. So as I was trying to find similarities between the two systems and their issues, one being the Israeli apartheid and another, the American system as a whole, I came across a term called settler colonialism. If we examine settler colonialism as a term defined as, quote, a district form of colonialism that functions through the replacement of indigenous populations with an invasive settler society that over time develops um, a distinctive identity and sovereignty, unquote, we start to see that it is a phenomenon which has occurred and is still occurring both in Palestine and America, as well as many other countries worldwide. This is important to examine when we talk about systemic oppression because settler colonialism is at the very heart of systemic oppression in modern day society. This is where I find my passion and interest for social justice and social justice reform. And this is something that I was never taught in school. I'm interested in social justice and I'm interested in the education system and its gaps because of the way history has been taught. This country is so invested and in forgetting its past to the detriment of those it has oppressed for centuries and what we emit into the world as educators, as an education system shapes how citizens view modern day society. The stories we tell and the biased selective history told to students become a reality. And if we keep teaching books and history from the perspective of the white male, the rewritten selective narrative of the America where you can pick yourself up from your bootstraps no matter who you are, then our students and our society will believe that narrative for the rest of their lives. And this is damaging because this dream isn't possible with our current system. If we trace the trajectory of the American dream, we see that it was never achievable for everybody. 
And from my personal reading and studies of Malcolm X's autobiography and Beloved by Toni Morrison, I have realized that the real history of this country has been concealed. And when we learn, for example, how America became a rich and prosperous society, we see that it used exports such as cotton and indigo and rice, but never really learn of the slaves who were brutally kept to harvest such exports. What we are taught in school is a selective version of this country's past. And when we do learn of the gruesomeness of slavery and genocide, it is usually a rewritten filtered version of the truth. We have to look deeply at the history we as a society choose to learn, the history this country chooses to show its youth, and those stories and voices we choose to ignore, which are so often those of the marginalized and systemically oppressed. The modern day education system is designed against minorities and underrepresented underrepresented communities. And when we start to hear about this country and its past and the goats that haunt our society like indigenous genocide and slavery and all of the human lives that have been ruined because of our past and current systems, we feel despair, but that is why it is imperative to learn of our true history, to understand the society we live in and begin to mend what has been torn and broken. We start changing the system by beginning to read against the grain when we teach novels by Toni Morrison, James Baldwin, Arundhati Roy, Chinwa Achibi, Alice Walker, and Joy Harjo. Our objective for this summit is to take initiative as students who experience the issues in our education system. And the main goal as a generation is to create a truthful version of our history, one that shows the issues embedded into society so we can begin to create a world in which all human beings have the undeniably embedded right to live with dignity without the danger of racist attacks, bias, or any other form of systemic oppression. You should attend this summit to start to learn about systemic racism in the education system and its impact on students and teachers in our modern day society. And I challenge you to notice your implicit bias. I challenge you to read these books, to hold yourself accountable and to teach yourself and your students a reliable version of our history. Join us in our fight for equitable education. Thank you. Woo! Fire. Magnificent, Nor. Next, we're going to transition to our next speaker uh, from Middletown City School District. I have the honor of introducing Rayana Tillis, uh, passionate. Uh, her words will speak for themselves. Um, her passionate will shine, her passion will shine through. Uh, and she, just like Nor, will uh, inspire you uh, to really invite her to the table. Uh, as you design reforms in your system. She is a student leader, uh, a MIDI here in Middletown City School District. I'm honored to uh, have the opportunity to learn from her over the last couple months as part of this experience. Um, I'm gonna quit talking and turn it over to our dynamic student leader, Rihanna. Excited to see you today, Rihanna. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rihanna Tillis. I am one of the many faces that you will see that is a part of the C Summit. This project is especially important to me because I feel kids or young adults are never asked what their outlook is on the important topics like social justice. I feel that adults forget that just because um, we aren't paying the bills or we can't vote don't mean we're not affected by everyday events that happen in this world, especially as a growing black woman, I'm very much affected by everything that's happening in the world with all the injustices and killings. Adults and or young brown or black women or men that look like me have been died or been wrongly convicted. And this is not just because of the corona outbreak. It's because of how we are viewed seeing similar to terrorists or savages. You could be minding your own business and people will just look at you like you're their enemy no matter what we do. In this neighborhood, 
um, I definitely had to get on to this social justice train because people who look like me, we want change, but we don't really feel like it's going to happen because it's been going on for so long. But I feel like with this is definitely the start of change. We're definitely going to do something better. Um, when you're trying to fight for peace, sometimes you have to disturb the peace for things to actually happen. The C Summit program has provided aspiring teens like me the platform to discuss and teach adults our point of views and our, how we see things and how we feel about them. Um, and it goes perfect with my presentation. It's called Through Our Eyes. You'd be learning exactly what the title says, Through Our Eyes, Through the Eyes of a Black or Brown or White Woman, Young Lady, or even Through the Eyes of a Student or just somebody who wants to give you information. You've taught us, you gave us lectures. Now it's our turn to teach you and inform you about things. And like I said, since, you know, I go outside and, you know, you hear racial slurs every time, like nobody wants to feel that, nobody wants to hear that. When I walk off the porch, I don't want to feel endangered or like I have to worry about somebody attacking me or calling me a name because of the color of my skin. I shouldn't feel like Every time I go outside, there's a one wanted poster, most wanted poster with my skin color on it. So I feel, and I'm so happy to be a part of this. And just like there's all forms of media, you see that um, people are being, um, there's a lot of races coming out. People are being wrongly convicted, wrongly accused of things that they haven't even done. It's not even any more proven innocent to guilty for Black people because they already see us as guilty. A white man and a Black man could do the same thing, but just as shown on TV shows, you know, it's made fun of as a joke, but this is real. They will get 10 years while the white man will get five months for the same crime that they committed. So... I'm happy to be a part of this, and thank you. So next up, I think I get an opportunity to introduce uh, our student here in Richland School District 2, a young lady that I truly admire as a young leader. Um, I have the honor and privilege of, of introducing Yasmin Lattimore. Ms. Lattimore is the quintessential embodiment of the next generation of leaders. She is a young leader who realizes the power of her authenticity. She is aware, she is resilient, she is innovative, she recognizes her responsibility to be both socially and politically astute and is committed to the truth and advocating for her fellow man. Most importantly, she is courageous. Yasmin is a senior who attends Ridgeview High School where she, is current, where she currently serves as a student body president at Ridgeview. She leads a diverse group of student leaders who are committed to being change agents in both their school and their community addressing topics that range from the racial and gender bias of the district's dress code policies to advocating for hate crime legisla legislation in the South Carolina General Assembly. Because South Carolina, we are one of three states who does, does not have a hate crime bill. Whether she is coaching her youth soccer club or leading her student body or even earning her MET certification, she is making an impact that will be felt for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to my student, Yasmin Lattimore. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Davis, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning for all, for some. My name is Yasmin Lattimore and I am here to speak to you today about a matter of importance. But first, we're gonna do a quick exercise. 
So I'm gonna say some statements and if it relates to you, just follow the directions. If you played a sport in high school, hold your right hand up. Okay. If you have a tattoo, keep your right hand up. Put your hands down. If you used to teach math, put your left hand up. If you are an only child, keep your left hand up. Put your hands down. If you are a superintendent, put both your hands up. If you are an African-American, keep both hands up. Everyone put your hands down. As you saw in this exercise, every single person's attributes overlapped, kind of like a three-man weave as you're going in the braid. They weren't just the athlete, the math star, the lonely kid. They weren't just an occupation, a level, a color. They were everything all together, blended like a recipe, differently into every single person, so no one guy or girl is the same. We're different, but if you can see our differences, that's the key. The See Us All Summit is just that. We want you to see us, us as in black minority students who are just as smart as others, us as in Hispanic Latino students who can score high on a test like any other. Us, as in students for equitable education. Yet, how do we come to the table when we don't know how to start? In my freshman year of high school, I knew how to start, but I didn't have a seat. I was just a freshman with a lot of ambitions. I wanted to do everything I set my mind and heart on. But not one person believed I could do it. I was told it was too much or I wouldn't be able to handle it. To them, I was just the black girl, the class clown, the attitude problem. Every time somebody told me that, I asked why. Why couldn't I? Why couldn't I do something I set my mind to? Why couldn't you believe I could accomplish these things? They were silent. Their silence fueled my aspirations. Throughout my four years of high school, I have been able to travel out my state and even out the country on service and community trips, um, playing in sports, serving in leadership capacities and keeping my grades. I've been able to do all of these things. And this is the very reason I hate the word can't. You can't do this because, or you can't do that. Can't is one of the many words that I have been told throughout my life. But I just realized, because you couldn't, doesn't mean that I can. We can do anything we set our minds to. This conference is a chance for teachers, students, principals, coaches, mentors, and more to learn that every student has value, that their ability to not let them circumstances define them makes them great. This is the starting part to learn how to eat at the table. This is the invitation inside. We, the students matter. We have value. We exist and we want you to see that. I invite you, your school districts and your fellow faculties to join us at the hashtag See Us All Summit on April 24th from 11 to 3 p.m. We are here, we are seen and we want to be heard for this is our time for you to truly see us. Thank you. Wow, such such powerful, um, I don't even have words. I, I wonder what I was doing at the age of 10th grade. Like I was doing something wrong if I was not doing what you were doing. So I just wanna say my kids are here. I wanted them to hear this is my daughter Kennedy and my come here. Uh, my uh, eight-year-old. They were so inspired by what you said. So, guys, what do you want to say to the young people? Good job. Good I'm job. so inspired by you. I'm guys. so inspired by you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Now go back to class. Uh, <laughs> so 
once again, uh, this is the reason why on yesterday I stated without engagement, there is no equity. And without equity, there is no innovation. We must engage our young people um, to ensure that we understand what their needs are, to ensure that we're doing the real work. Um, not just saying we have culturally competent curriculum, but have you talk to the black and brown people in your community or your district to create and have a seat at the table to create the culturally responsive. So we are so excited for the C-Summit. This is why Digital Promise uh, wanted to be the host of this event. So once again, to Dr. Julie Mitchell from Rowland Unified School District, uh, to Mr. Marlon Stiles from Middletown School Districts for being uh, the leaders and champion of this work. Thank you to our league districts that are a part of this, Kettle Moraine, once again, Middletown, Richland School District 2, uh, Ridgewood High School District, uh, Santa Ana Unified School District, who's the interim status, and to our non-league districts who, by the way, we have a recruitment process going, going on now uh, to uh, uh, Mount Vernon City School District, Roland Unified School District, and Kenosha Unified School District. We look forward to joining, having you join the league. Uh, go ahead. Hey, uh, well, I'm wondering, because we have a few minutes uh, between our next um, piece, are the students still here and is there an opportunity to ask them a couple questions? Yes. Um, well, I would like to start. <laughs> um, first of all, I just, uh, I was, um, I just had tears in my eyes when I was listening to you all talk and I just thank you for the inspiration and in bringing your voices into our space this morning. Uh, I am, you know, we have uh, leaders across the country here uh, superintendents and district leaders, uh, principals, um, would love to know uh, if you were to um, give them advice on the first step to take uh, to really create, open up the space, create the space um, for students to lead, what would you tell them? And anybody can jump off of uh, mute. I can start with that. Um, <laughs> uh, I think um, this is something that I have a lot of conversations about. If you look at like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and how these two were like such prominent voices and like everybody knew they, who they were in the United States. And we haven't had two leaders like that in such a long time. And it's harder now because obviously media is much more advanced and there's so many voices telling you to do things. I think you know, what we're doing here, having students speak for superintendents around the country is a really, really great opportunity to start that, you know, widespread message. Um, you know, since we have this system that is so ingrained in us and that's been the same way for centuries, it is so hard to make lasting change and it's so hard to move beyond just talking about these issues. And, you know, the summit is we're trying to make it our, our first step towards equitable education. And if this can be something that has a, a message nationwide, it, it's definitely a first step. And I think it's about, it's about getting those voices out there because they're here. They've been here for decades um, and they're strong. And I'd say that like, it can start in your class and um, make your classroom a comfortable and a safe space for kids to express themselves. Don't reject their questions, even if it's difficult or make them feel less worthy. It's just like the kid in the classroom who wants to participate, who doesn't have the answer right, but still wants to give it a try, but he's not going to because the kids in the classroom are gonna laugh at him. It's all about rejection. Just make everyone feel comfortable no matter their differences or their backgrounds. I think that help you. They have tacos. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Nora, you wanna add? I just saw a question in the chat about my personal um, speech at the summit. It's going to be about uh, systemic racism in the education system as a whole. So we're uh, we're talking about the origins of it, and you know when we look at Brown v. Board of Education, um, you know obviously it was great that it was passed, but it was also passed by eight white men 
who told to do this in the utmost, who were told to unsegregate schools in the most efficient way possible. Um, but this led to the only, the all white schools survived and um, black teachers were left with nothing and their schools were left with nothing. And we still see the consequences of this today. Um, there was like a 66% decrease in black students majoring in education because they didn't have any, um, you know, role model, role, role model teachers or uh, representation to go after that. So it's going to be super interesting. All right. Um, any other questions from the folks in the audience for our wonderful students. And by the way, I just want to underscore that this conference is, it's not for students. It's for superintendents and district leaders and principals and teachers. And so uh, that's why we are encouraging uh, for uh, leaders in the league to, to spread the word to your colleagues um, to take a couple out of hours out of your Saturday on April 24th to join these, these students. Any other and questions? Go Rihanna ahead. and Yasmin, can you share the titles of your sessions? Um, I'm actually partnered with Rayona. Um, we're both in the Through Our Eyes uh, presentation, which kind of takes a look at that social injustice and inequity in every aspect of life. So like through healthcare, um, financial, home, education, kind of taking everything into one as well as um, media and how um, black people or any person is perceived on television. It's, we believe that will come down to three things, you know, um, how much money you have, whether you're a man or woman or um, what color your skin is. So, yes. Hey, David, um, Mia Shira, I see your hand raised. So you wanna jump in here with a question? I do, I have a question. And for, for first, well done, lady, it's very inspiring. What's missing today is your journey, how you got to where you are today and, and became the speakers for your communities. I know your districts, I know your superintendents. What advice would you give to your superintendents on what's working as, you, as we make these changes and as we improve the system and we dive deep into hearing your voices? What things worked for you? Because you obviously, you know, you're successful today. So what's working in your districts that you wouldn't want to change at all? Well, I'll start. Well, what's working is when I was in school, because now I'm virtual, but when I was in school in the classroom, history class, um, Mr. Butler would allow conversation. He would allow the whole room to get uncomfortable on certain topics. And then everyone would put their piece in, the whole classroom would be engaged as well as the teacher. And we would all tell our stories or our different point of views. And that worked for the whole class. Everyone was comfortable with everybody. We learned a lot. You know, there was um, sometimes where people would just be crying because the conversation got so real. So I know that works. Yeah, uh, personally, I go to a charter school um, inside of our district, and I'm in a class actually taught by a senior student. She's doing this for her senior portfolio, and it's about, you know, conversations we need to have uh, surrounding social justice. I think that's some, yeah, again, I like the idea of students educating teachers because teachers can't teach on what they don't know. Also, zero tolerance policies um, for students and teachers. Um, with racist incidents, slurs, uh, things like that. I think what worked for me is like, you know, knowing that you have a space to talk. So especially with my district and under our superintendent, um, he constantly, he reaches out to our student leaders. We meet once a month. Um, you can always email him and everything. And then in the, those student leaders, it's kind of like a system. We kind of trickle down to where in each school, each of us are holding our own talks, our own talks on hate crime, on social justice, and we're holding these events about them. And we take those events with our student leaders and they go speak to our superintendent. And so that communication bridge that's happening 
And as I think what works for us and encourages students to speak out more as we've had like sophomores and freshmen speaking out against dress code policies, grading policies, and even more. And so just having that open communication bridge works for us. Thank you. Great job. Thank you guys so much to Noor, Rihanna, Yasmin. Thank you for your, your leadership here. Thank you for your voice. And we look forward to seeing you uh, at the next Saturday at the conference. And I'm super excited for you right now. We have a little over 570 folks registered. We need more folks to sign up. And we ask school district leaders, please share it with your staff, your peers, Share it with anyone that needs to hear this work. Um, share it with your congressman, whoever that you think needs to be here to help change the trajectory for all students to see us all. Now we're gonna transition over to a quick presentation uh, video to help you guys understand a little more and hear the voices of some of our more of our young people. What do you see when you look at me? Do you see a problem solver? Do you see an activist? Maybe you see a really bold person. Do you see a future civil rights lawyer? What do you see when you look at me? What do you see when you look at me? Do you see a black man? Do you see a hard worker? Maybe you see somebody that's impatient. Well, I hope you see a future diversity officer whose goal is to highlight inclusion in today's society. What do you see when you look at me? What do you see when you look at me? Do you see a Hispanic gay teenager? Do you see someone who is a first generation undocumented student in their family? Maybe you see someone who always seems to carry a smile on their face and a very outgoing person. I hope you see someone who wants to become a future pediatrician. What do you see when you look at me? Students for Equitable Education Summit is a movement for advocacy to action. Please join us on Saturday, April 24th at uh, at uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Please register and share today. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again to our students and to the voices of the league. Now we're gonna to transition to a few of our corporate partners uh, who have helped us to be able to support and provide resources to our league leaders. First up, we will have Altitude Learning from Devin. We would also like to thank Devin uh, for one of the books that arrived in your swag boxes. Uh, he sent two books. Some of you received a learner-centered leadership and some of you see, received a learner-centered innovation book. Welcome, Devin. Uh, thank you so much. Actually, I'm hoping I can turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Katie Martin, to do our update. Uh, is there a way to... I'm, there we you go. go. Take it away, yep. Katie. I'm, I'm here, happy to do that. Uh, that is no small feat to follow up those amazing students. I just want to um, take a minute to just say how, how awesome those presentations were, and I cannot wait for that summit. Um, I was already signed up, but now very excited. That is really the core of our work. So thank you very much. And we just want to say from Altitude Learning, um, really on behalf of the whole team, we have seen the work that you guys have done as superintendents and as the league. Um, and we are just so grateful for your vulnerability, your courage, and your incredible leadership that you've displayed. Uh, we know this work has not just been, has not happened overnight. You've been doing this for years and years and setting up the ecosystem, building capacity, and listening to your learners all along the way to be able to create these opportunities for kids through the course of the pandemic. And you have really created um, models for other districts beyond to see what's possible. So we just wanna say thank you and highlight our partners um, 
that we get to work with deeply, El Segundo, Poway, Menlo Park. We've been grateful to be on this journey with you. And we're excited to see you all in LA, El Segundo soon so that we can showcase that work. Um, and like Dwayne said, you have, should have two books, one from Devin and one from me. And uh, you know, pass them on, share them, read them. Please let us know what you think. And thank you for all that you do. And hope to see you at the C Summit next week. Thank you. Thank you, Devin and Katie. Up next, we have our next corporate partner, Catch On, ENA Catch On, where Monica will be sharing a little bit about their work. Hi there. Thank you, Dwayne. I uh, really appreciate it. I also want to just pause for a minute to um, just say how moved I am to be part of this morning's conversation uh, and to hear the students. I didn't have anything scheduled for Saturday the 24th, but I do now. Um, so just really looking forward to it. So thank you. And a thank you to all the Digital Promise and League of Innovative Schools for taking us on as a partner this year. Um, as many of you know, we have a few school districts, about seven districts from the League, who have joined with us over the last three months in a pilot, and we'll be excited to share the results of our pilot in June. Um, I actually was on a long call this morning with the district and very impressed um, with what we're learning from the districts and the aggregated information. For those of you that don't know about Catch On, uh, we're an expansive data analytics tool that really allows you to dig deep and see what's happening in your engagements and your applications. And this pilot study has allowed us to really learn from all of um, the league schools that are participating about the really innovative practices, conversations, change management, um, identifying gaps, et cetera. So we're excited to share that information in June. I do wanna just let you all know that we do have a special offering for Digital Promise Districts uh, that um, is beyond what we offer uh, outside of here. So if you are interested, please reach out to us and let us know. And again, um, to the entire Digital Promise team and all the League of Innovative Schools, thank you. Thank you, Monica. Up next, we have one of our newest corporate partners and a good friend of mine, Mr. Craig Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Duane, for that warm introduction. Uh, many of you know us as Hovercam. Uh, we've been building these types of document cameras uh, for two years. I'm sorry, for 11 years. What we came up with during the pandemic was a new way for you to engage students. Because of COVID, the classroom is divided. But with eGlass, this writing glass right here, attention is now undivided. What we did is we combined a piece of glass um, right here. Here is glass. And we attached a hover cam camera to it. And the teacher is right here. And what this allows you to do and your teachers to do is really engage the remote learners. So when a kid is quarantined, you need to educate that kid, right? How are you going to do that? How are you going to provide the remote kids an engagement, a very engaging lesson? eGlass will do that to you. So the website is www.eglass.io. Um, so we look forward to setting up demonstrations for you afterwards. Again, this is a way to provide a very engaging lessons for your remote learners and in-class learners at the very same time. Thank you, Duane. Thank you. And now I'm gonna turn it over to our fearless leader, Ms. Kimberly Smith. I'm about to call you doctor again, Kim. All right, I'll take it. Um, good afternoon, folks. Good to see you again, as always. And uh, we are diving into our next conversation. Uh, as we know, league convenings are a whirlwind. And so in that spirit, we are moving on here. Thank you to our students. Um, thank you to our partners for your support. 